got a jock strap on his face. <laughs> yes. Wow. Okay. So cute. So cute. It's going to be a good show. And and Josie has a power face mask on. Yeah, that's me. Right. We're, we're switching personalities this week. Love it. Love it. What a table of queers. Yeah. yeah. Four Latinos and a white man. Yeah. I have to say it Please. again. We're making history tonight. I continue tonight. to tell Tony to stop appropriating my whiteness. Yeah. Uh, I'm Listen, your privilege doesn't get you anywhere. <laughs> Not at this table. Not at this table. <laughs> Not at this table. Uh -oh. Not tonight. Get a, oh, God. I'm going to be fighting for my life. Good <laughs> <laughs> Well, good evening, America, and welcome to It's Happening Out, the world's most popular live gal uh, gay, we're gay <laughs> uh, television talk show. It's 8 p.m. Wednesday, April 14th, 2021, and I'm your anchor, Al Ferguson. Let's start by meeting tonight's host on the show. Welcome, Power Infinity. He's a diva and a DJ. He is the original, one of the original hosts, along with me, at It's Happening Out, and is the host of one of Florida's most important LGBTQ talent competitions, Queen of the Night. He is also one of America's most vibrant political LGBTQ voices. Welcome, Power. And I understand there are some things going on in your life. What's going on there, Power? Hey, hey, darlings. What's going on, children? Um, well, I am here. And unfortunately, um, after almost three years with It's Happening Out, I am announcing that this will be my last broadcast. What? Um, what? Yes, it's going to be my last broadcast uh, because I have um, found an incredible opportunity, a uh, job opportunity, and I have accepted it. And so, unfortunately, the job does not um, allow me to continue broadcasting. But I just want to say, after almost three years and being part of the original cast, it's been my honor and my pleasure to work with the Happening Out Network. And I'm going to miss all of you dearly. Yeah, and Aww. power. We, uh, of course, we're sad, uh, but we're not sad because uh, the move uh, of what you're getting ready to do is outstanding. We're going to talk a little bit more about this for everybody, including power, uh, not knowing what we're getting ready to do. But we'll we'll talk about that more in the mm. show. Uh, this is Tony Lima. He is the chief operating officer of Ariana Center Trans Latina Florida, one of the nation's most important trans rights and services organizations in America. He is a longtime South Florida LGBTQ activist and a political advocate. Tony is the anchor of the world's first weekly live trans talk show with trans host. The show will be called Translation. Welcome, Tony. Thank you so much. I am so excited about this show, and hopefully you guys will all be watching and supporting. We have the most amazing cast of trans activists and me sort of assisting people, getting everyone together and moving the conversation along. It should be fantastic. Yeah, as the um, as the anchor, get ready for the disrespect. <laughs> I will be <laughs> Al. Oh, my God. Exactly. We're going to buy you a bell. <laughs> gonna buy you I need a bell, bell. yes. Right. <laughs> right. All right, next up, let's welcome Faye. What? She's a radio personality and has the popular blog and YouTube channel called Faye What? She's a hostess and MC for many South Florida events, host of Unity Coalition's TV show, UCTV, and is the anchor of the travel news show, Happening Out Travel. Welcome, Faye. Hi, hola, mi gente. So happy to be here. I was crying behind my mask. We're going to miss you, Power. I only signed up for the show because of you. Yeah, wait, you told me that. Uh, wait. Maybe wait. I told you that, too. All right. She's this, to everyone. Is, this is <laughs> Chef Josie. She is a Bravo TV top chef and the master <clears throat> of the popular champagne and oyster celebration restaurant, Bubbles and Pearls, right on the heart of the famous Wilton Drive. Welcome, Chef Josie. Hey, well, on, in, whatever, you know, however way you look at being in the heart. I'm also, I don't know how if you told everyone, but I'm DJing these days with my alter ego, cooking up some melodic beats and taking us way back to the classic times when music was great again. And, uh, well, you know, that alter ego, her name is Lady Snack Daddy. Yes! So, <laughs> yes! so come out and get your groove on. Be ready to be sexy. Get dressed up. Let's bring that sassy Miami, South Florida vibe yes. back to the scene and let's come back with a real bang. 
Can I start the conspiracy theory right now? Uh, power exits the scene and uh, <laughs> Snack Daddy, Lady Snack Daddy enters. I think they're the same person. <laughs> <laughs> next Ask up, this. Pass the torch. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, boo. This uh, next up is Jasmine Price Lords. She is known as the plus size Barbie and the bearded beauty, as you can see. <laughs> she has been performing for over 10 years, and this is the new. Florida mother of the iconic House of Lords. You can catch her as the newest host at Georgie's Alibi on Saturday nights. Welcome, Jasmine. Hello, 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 everyone. I'm so excited to be back. Thank you for having me again. I guess I didn't mess it up too bad last week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, yeah. I, I don't know who you asked. <laughs> Uh, next up, this uh, well. Uh, next up, this is Victor Jimenez, executive director of the Outshine LGBTQ Plus Film Festival. The Happening Out Television Network is the digital television sponsor for the 23rd annual festival, coming April 23rd to May 2nd. We will bring you interviews and stories that are going to bring one of America's most important LGBTQ film festivals off the screen. Watch this. While we are Get watching you. on Hi, there now there for the 23rd annual edition of the Outshine LGBTQ Plus Film Festival happening April 23rd to May. Our incredible grand opening drive-in event followed by 10 days of non-stop films from here and all around the world that you can watch at home. Watch trailers and get your tickets at OutshineFilm.com now. out of course uh, you might not know but he is a lifelong film aficionado he is passionate not only in his love of classic films but also about being a forceful advocate for people convening in a communal spirit to share the film viewing experience he joined the Miami Gay and Lesbian Film Festival remember that name in 2011 and that became the Outshine Film Festival held twice a year in both Fort Lauderdale and Miami. Welcome, Victor. Al, thank you very much for having me here today. Um, always great to be here. The festival, like you saw, April 23rd through May 2nd, drive in. We're very excited to have this year two physical events, uh, opening and closing, and we're just excited to get the people back together, and we're excited for Fort Lauderdale in October to be more physical. And we got a lot going on, and we're so proud that we're your, community, your media partner, and we are excited to send you so much great filmmakers and talent coming your way. You are going to hear so many of their directors and, and performers, uh, stars from the different movies. We're really going to do uh, a lot of in-depth over the next two and a half weeks. You're going to like it. So good evening, America. We are the first and most popular live LGBTQ talk show in the world. There is so much to talk about tonight. Next on... It's happening out. This week on It's Happening Out. Join us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. It all starts right now, live on It's Happening Out. Well, let's get started as you are watching a live and unedited LGBTQ talk show. Anything can happen. You've already seen that already tonight. If you're on YouTube, make sure to subscribe. <laughs> We're vaccinated. Exactly. And click the bell for updates. If you're on Facebook, like and share the video and start a watch party. Let's begin with the unique meme of the week. For almost three years, uh, this is how we've always uh, started our show. And I haven't seen this meme. It's called planning ahead. That sounds hmm. like a good idea. Let's yeah, uh, look at planning idea. ahead. And um, perhaps we can see that in full screen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Does that actually work? Yeah. 
Well, I mean, if you know what they're talking about. Oh, <laughs> oh, now I know what we're yeah. talking about. Yeah. Yeah, Victor, he knew what we Victor were talking about. We were talking <laughs> well, you go to the film festival and you drink a lot of pineapple juice. And, <gasps> and Malibu wow. is like pineapple with <laughs> Victor tequila. Is that what you're seeing? All right. Yeah. Speaking. <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> right. Uh, speaking of uh, something liquid and drinking, let's <gasps> play our yes or no game. <laughs> God. called yes. I Swallow That. We are going to invite you at home to play right along with us as I'm going to ask these hosts four questions. If they agree with the question, they're going to take the shot. If they disagree, well, it's just going to be a long night for me. <laughs> so let's play I'd Swallow That. Everybody understands our rules? Da. Ready. All right, here we go. Question number one. We broadcast from the gayest place on planet Earth. But there is two distinct communities. I'd swallow that. Who? Getting ready to piss somebody off. <laughs> Gay communities change. For South Florida, Fort Lauderdale is the future, and Miami is the past. Uh oh. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I drank quite heartily. Oh. As the power, I'm, Miami I'm, boy. I'm looking at power. Like that's what I'm like. Oh my goodness. No! Power, no! Say it isn't so! This can't be your last <laughs> broadcast and you're gonna do Miami like that! Come do on, it, remember power, the 90s. Do it, power, do remember it. Remember our times in the 90s! Yes, Don't do it. it! Do it! Exactly, I'm gonna, 90s. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do a fade does all the time. I'm gonna take half a sip. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's not, how the, that's not how the game works, bitch. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, is man. It, uh, yeah, all right. Listen, and, I agree with this wholeheartedly. Uh, and, and, and Tony, I, I'm dying to come to you, of course. Um, uh, Power, what do you think? Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Choose one. Oh. Um, I mean, I'll say Fort Lauderdale. I mean, Abel's up here now, so... It... <laughs> wow. 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 Your girlfriend wow. is up here. Okay, what got it. See, right? <laughs> And, and Tony, uh, you're a Miami... Uh... So born and raised wow. as Miami as they come, as you all know. But I just put my house on sale in Miami Shores and I'm moving... Yes, Victor, I am moving up here to Wilton or to Oakland Park or somewhere in the vicinity because I feel that we have a sense of community here and I want to be part of that community. I think we lost that in Miami a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. you know, um, uh, the saying is true. The last uh, uh, gay boy or girl in Dade County Please turn off the lights. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody disagree? Don't look at me like that. Listen, I came out in Miami. Miami, I, I, I'm not going to lose hope, okay? Miami will come back. We will open up Asuka 2. Something will happen, okay? Like, oh, by the way, I want to tell you, production, production's talking in my ear. Blockbuster has just announced it's coming back. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up, Al. I still have my card. No. <laughs> me too. Before, before, right. we move on, before we move on, you know, the reason it was so hard for me to take that drink is because I wax nostalgic for the days of sure. Miami. So that's why it was hard for me because I, I remember those glory days. But if I'm honest, I'm with Tony. Miami has really lost what made it special especially when you compare it now to what it used to be. And those of us, and Faye knows this is true, those yeah, of us yeah. who came from Miami, we know what it used to be, girl. Yeah, and it yeah, ain't what it, ain't what it, it, what ain't. it is. So, no, yeah. So, so, no, it, yeah, it breaks I, my I, heart that it used to be gay. Like, you would be able to go, oh, South Beach, totally gay. I, Not I, the case I, anymore, I was you know? Here. I was sitting here Definitely waiting agree. for my uh, friends, uh, Tony and Faye, because I was getting ready to uh, shade them. Because when they come up, uh, or when they want to have a good time on a Friday or Saturday oh. night, where do they come? They hang out with Al in Fort, Fort Lauderdale. Lauderdale. The shade. But it's I also true, though. It's true. true. It's really <laughs> important to mention, because your question was very specific. Yes. It said, Miami's the past, past and Fort Lauderdale's exactly. the future. That's right. Hey, that's not shading Miami. No, that's you know, right. It's just simply saying we're evolving. Let's be politically yeah. correct. We love Palace. We love Gathering. Yeah. Uh, we love Twist. the Outshine Film Festival. We love Twist. 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 We love Twist. Yep. Uh, where else can I get? Gathering. Uh, Latinos. Gathering. Latinos. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Asuka. 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 Yeah. Asuka. 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 All right. Let's move on. Yeah. Question number two. <laughs> We don't live in Idaho. Well, even if you are in Idaho or Fort Utah. Lauderdale, <laughs> Utah, love those. we don't live in Idaho or Texas. But this week, it seemed like it, at least as it came to COVID-19. 
I'm feeling the shots, by the way. <laughs> the <laughs> first shot, I know, that was I'd swallow that. <laughs> this week's mask burning rally in the gayest place on planet Earth, which was at the corner of A1A and Los Olas, it was just plain ignorant. Drink up, babies. Oh, yeah. We all think that, huh? Oh, my God. Oye, un montón de idiotas que estaban ahí a que, que quemando máscara. Dame el favor. ¿Qué no, I'm drinking lighter <laughs> fluid, Did, by the way. Oh, yeah, what Ooh, is this that's... stuff? Good thing I don't shave because I, I would have to. <laughs> <laughs> what did y'all think about making the national news? We broadcast on that corner. Power and I broadcast on that corner, Pride mm -hmm. Fort Lauderdale, yep. where they were just destroying Biden, burning masks. Oh, what did y'all think when you just saw that? A lot of ignorance. I mean, that's basically what it is. And people more holding on to a dream that was never there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you look in the mask pile, right, because it was like a little bonfire of the mask, it was all like the, the white mask, not any of the pretty masks. Like, no, no, I paid $10 for this on Etsy. I'm not throwing it. I'm not burning that. You know? They're committed, but only if it's 12 cents. Exactly. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got it. All right. Question number three. It's 2005. Wait. What? what? And it's coming to an end. A little tear on my cheek. Pittsburgh, famed Liberty, Liberty Avenue. And it's Nine Inch Night at the iconic disco called Babylon. Remember Aww. it? I'd swallow that. I peed a little when I found out Brian Kenny and Queer of Folk, Queer as Folk, uh, was coming back. It's coming to Peacock. What do y'all think about the reboot? No Did you way. Pee a it's little? not them. They're like 104 now. Like, yeah. why would it be Brian and them? No, like, is it no. them or is it new people? No, well, now they own businesses in the community. <laughs> but, but they're there. And they're like nurturing baby, the gays. baby gays, Actually, you know? Really? The story. They're going to New Orleans. It's an entirely new Knowledge. Uh, yeah. I think that's what makes it exciting. The, and Victor, you didn't take the newer well, well, I, 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 I thought it was the same people, which I wouldn't agree with, but now it's a new cast. Exactly. And it's a different story. Like, young and sneaking up and staying up late without my mom knowing because I was an out. Yet, obviously, and it was like, yeah. that was like my dirty little pleasure. I saw Tony and, 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 and I reported this at Queer like, News wow. Tonight yeah. as a as a news story, and both of us said, "Yeah, we watched it secretly in yeah. in in a private place because you your family and friends couldn't see you watching it because it was so scandalous." That I you know. Know. can everybody remember that intro dance music at yeah. the beginning, right? Yeah. By the way, did you know this? Here's a, a, a I fun think fact? a fun fact about Queer as Folk. When they did, in fact, I was on a set that Queer Folk filmed, where they had a dance scene in, that was in Toronto, that bar, that it wasn't really in Pittsburgh, uh, that played Babylon. Mm -hmm. Everybody was dancing to no music. There was no sound at all, so they could have the dialogue, and they were dancing with no music on wow. the floor at Babylon. That would have been easy for you. You have no rhythm anyway, right? Uh. So what would it matter? <laughs> Tony, remember what I said about translation? This is what's going to happen to yeah. you. I see it now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, let's move on. Question Are you giving your girl four. <laughs> Yes. What happens when the first gay cabinet member speaks at the White House press room and he uses one of the most famous gay sex phrases in history? <laughs> well, he breaks the internet. I'd swallow that. It was hysterical when Pete Buttigieg said he hoped to get back to cruising this summer. Mm -hmm. By the way, he was talking about big boats. <laughs> big something. Yeah. <laughs> what so, did y'all think so, there, Pete? So are we just drinking because we like are laughing about yes, it? Well, right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did y'all think when that happened? Did y'all read it? Did you see it? Well, it was a, it's a Freudian slip, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You well, did. he meant the cruise well, yeah. industry. No, right? We reported this last night. Long time. The story yeah. is not true. Right. The story is not true. We reported at Queer News Tonight, he said cruise industry. All the gay guys immediately <laughs> said he's talking about Girl cruising. Boy. Exactly. <laughs> they all heard what they wanted By to hear. By the way, just like all the gay boys, all the radical Republicans what? said America is being destroyed because he's talking about sex. Oh yes. my God! It wasn't oh true my God. either way. Oh, Isn't those that hilarious. Those three moms That's were up in arms. Scary. I bet, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. I find it more. I find it more hilarious that the um, extreme conservative right that's supposed no. to 
be so, um, you know, holy, 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 would know what that catchphrase is. So, oh, oh, okay. That to me is the key key and the cackle. Yeah. I'll drink to what Power just said. Yeah, I'm I'll agree. I'll agree. I'll agree. I'll agree. I'll agree with yeah, that. Yeah, there. You have one more. Um, Power, by the way, I'm not sure I'm going to get through your last organized show because I've done all four shots and they have hit me right in the <laughs> So <laughs> let's move on. Uh, what what television show does this where you get drunk right in front of uh, the viewer? Well, at its You're happening we, can out, think about it. we like to bring attention of the LGBTQ community to the best thing of the week. A strange one this week. Reddit burned down the gay house. We say gay, not LGBTQ, because it seems to be only a male issue. Penis size. Now, that may apply to Faye and Josie, by the way. It may. But penis size. Only. Right? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Victor's in on it, too, now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, well, we were right. close. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Jokes write themselves, don't they? Wow. <laughs> Reddit discussed penis size this week. And interestingly, the majority of Reddit readers felt they were too small. Mm. Until women weighed in on the pages saying, shut up, you're not too small. More than 50,000 comments on Reddit. One of the interesting reveals was that penis size percentile calculator. Did you even know that such a thing exists? Mm -mm. Well, there is. And the app is the largest composite of male size information in the world. Tony's turning to it. As I am. I'm going to start calculating no, this no, minute. It shows you. I probably have a long application. Right? It's a long Where, application. Let me get the story Thank out you, first. Thank you, uh, it, it shows you, you need how to yardstick? measure. <laughs> Wait, y'all are getting ahead of me. It tells you average across the world for length girth, and more. What gets the most attention is the percentile calculator. The app tells you if you were in a room of a thousand guys, how many would be bigger than you oh, out of a thousand guys. But who are so best thing of the week, the opposite. How many age old gay you? fear. They thought they had small penises. Plot twist, they find out, uh, measure for yourself because you're not too small. What do y'all think? Hmm. I think a lot of money spent on the male penis in this. <laughs> Can I measure the one in my drawer? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> uh -oh. We need more drinks. <laughs> I mean, I don't need to measure. I know. Oh, right. yeah. 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 Magnum, Magnum, yes. Magnum, yes. baby. Magnum, baby. Yeah. Alpha Wait, one. This is true. <laughs> Oh my God! Wow. <laughs> Listen, I'm Cuban. I don't worry about these things. Oh, Ooh, can I get an amen from everyone else on the table? All right. Thank I know. you, Jazz. Believe me, Thank you, Al has told me so much <laughs> about his Cuban nights. Okay. Uh, 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 what is small? Uh, by the way, right, I, mean, I love Cuba. I know. <laughs> yes. Yes. Average I will say I'm inches. very well aware. So no, what is that? Miami. 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 Oh no. Five point five, no, five inches. inches. Yeah, Miami average is. That's what the app says. Five point five inches. That's somewhere else. That's in Middle America. Uh, the entire world, uh, average. Yeah. This is the a largest there. <laughs> composite in the world. App. In the world, it's 5.5. .5. Okay, so boys at the table, you know that you have all measured it. So what is it? Yes, I'm, yes, I'm Wait, asking. You, you want us to tell us your yes! length? Yes, yes, full happy. Yes. Wait. I'll show you later. That's I, oh, I oh. <laughs> All right. We're having I'm a <laughs> Uh, wait, I'm very excited. I, I performed this in, in the interest of study okay. and reporting the news. Sure. Out of a thousand, I had zero. What does that mean, out of a thousand? That meant out of a thousand, there would be zero. Bigger than you. Yeah. Oh. Uh, please. <laughs> Ah, yeah. Power, power. Power. like, don't power. come Thank with you, that power. crap. You might as well do it on your way out. Do it up, Power. <laughs> He's going to go out with shade. Yeah, All the shade. Like, oh, my God. Bitch, please. Power, give it to him, Power, please. <laughs> what do y'all think? The idea that uh, they would teach you how to measure correctly, and they would teach you to say, wait, you are obsessed with size numbers which are not true. 
Well, that's the point of this. Well, the, mm -hmm. the whole thing is the fragility of the male ego. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, that's what it all comes down to. Oh, look at the, the guy with the big truck and the big engine. Oh, he's a small yeah. penis. You know, like, well, how often do you think that, right? No, but and most men aren't secure about their penis size. For the four months that I dated men, right, I remember telling a guy, like, dude, no, that's not small. Like, guys have a real big insecurity about and it. And let me ask a question. Did you ever see it flaccid, or you always saw it at least with a minor chubby? No, I saw it both ways. Oh, she and did it. Yeah, I did no, it. Saying, I did the deed. You, wait, I took one for the no, team. No, what I'm wait. saying is... Have you seen the, uh, the television show on Netflix, uh, Stranger Things, the monster that consumes yes. everything? Uh -huh. Eat the monster. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow. 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 I have to take that in right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what I wonder about this study? Like, how is it broken out, like, by demographics, right? Like, I would love to know, like, the racial cultural breakdown of it, something like it this. It doesn't do that. The, uh, the uh, percentile calculator focuses on Western society, mm. Eastern society, and worldwide society. Mm. There's also some indications also in terms of the Kinsey studies mm. and other related studies. But it is by far and away. They have taken hundreds of thousands of metrics that have gone into the calculator. So it is by far the the gold standard. I mean, if all these men are lying <laughs> on grinder and stuff, <laughs> everything else, you think they're telling the truth on the set? I know. I, like, I don't, I don't hoping know. Hoping they're going to share. You know, I just think that, uh, that speaking for like Latinos, right? Yeah. Like, not we worried. think, well, no, well, Puerto Ricans, every, listen, every Latino I've ever been with, myself included, we all think we have like the biggest penis ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So I don't know that that's ever been a worry for me. I've actually never like measured my junk. Have Never? You, yeah, I was, thank you. you. Know, thank you. I know. Know. Like for I, what? I, I, I thought I was. I thought I was the only one. I was you know? about to share what I thought was going to be like a big reveal. But um, I've, <laughs> I've admired. I've admired mine. I, I've, <laughs> I've left mine. And I have never. I've never actually taken a ruler to mine. I've wow. never measured yeah. it. For what? what All right. You, one of, one of these days, I figure maybe I will because everybody else is doing it. Let me do it too. But I've never Wait. done it. We're showing you right now. There's the calculator uh, <laughs> homepage. So, Power, you have the opportunity before the end of the show to go in and see how you measure up. That's how <laughs> you do it. It will give you instruction. Uh, I, I'm going to leave y'all really... with, with the cliffhanger. What is it? I'll no, come back oh. <laughs> no but, okay, but do you really believe that Power never has measured his junk? That's really hard. No, it's like I... saying, like, you know, oh, no, what was I... that part in that movie, Silence of the Lambs, where yeah. the guy put the thing <laughs> between his legs? <laughs> Every man has done that. Every man has done that. Every man has done that. We're not arguing that. We're just arguing the measuring. Tony said that he never... Tony said that he never... Tony said that he never measuring. Go ahead, Tony said he never measured his. No, the same. And that Child, didn't get as lying. much of a gag. But but Power says he never measured his. And <laughs> You're <they> lying. Specifically, <laughs> specifically points me out and says, "Can you believe Power? Why Power?" <laughs> Wait, wait. It's because you're black. Okay, okay that's I, it. I have your back, Power. <laughs> for that question. Uh, no, it has nothing to do with his ethnicity. ethnicity. It has to do with that, that he's friends with. Sh <laughs> Damn the shade tonight. It has to do with that your best friend is Sean Palacios, and that child measures a fire hydrant. Oh. Oh. Okay, I, okay. I, I will speak to Sean on this. Yes, Sean, Sean measures daily. But, um, wow. And for those of y'all that don't for know Sean, let's for not science. get it twisted. I'm talking about kitty meow. Yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> exactly. We're doing it. All right. All right. Let's uh, let's move on uh, to our segment called "What's on Our Mind." Each host is getting ready to tell us in just 30 seconds what is important to them this week. Lots of stuff happening in their world. Uh, but remember, in just 30 seconds, or you're going to hear, are you ready, Faye? I hate that thing. Yeah. There is what you're going to hear at 30 seconds. Let's start uh, because in remote uh, and broadcast, Power Infinity. What's on your mind this week? Well, uh, what's on my mind? Here we go again. Another black man killed either by accident by stupidity or by racism. Children, if you don't know, they're police officers, if you don't know the difference between a taser and a gun, you should not be a cop, period, point blank. That's what's on my mind. Yeah, uh, absolutely to the point. And she has been arrested today. I watched her uh, taken in and arrested. Thank Tony God. Lima, what's on your mind this week? What's on my mind? So this is 
National Transgender HIV Testing Week. It ends on Sunday. So what's on my mind is the development of this fantastic new show called Translation, where, as we talked about earlier, we've assembled this great group of trans folks that are going to be really leading the charge on tra tra topics that affect the trans community as a whole. So I can't wait to see this come to fruition. We've been working on it for several weeks now, trying to put together the best possible product for you, our It's Happening Out family. So I can't wait to see the show come to fruition finally. Exciting and uh, first of its kind in the entire world to wow. bring a trans cast together to talk about it. Uh, Faye, what? What's on your mind this week? Faye, what? So DMX was one of my favorite rappers ever. And that's really big words coming from me because I love Biggie and I love Tupac, okay? But so... DMX is dead. They say that supposedly his, his blunt was laced with something. Listen, the reality is that guy had an awful drug addiction. And if you've got anybody in your life that's struggling, help them find some work. Uh, help them find some help. Let them know that they are not alone. Alcohol and drug abuse is serious, man. And people are dying daily. Yeah, absolutely. Very good. Uh, interesting point. And Chef Josie, what's on your mind this week? Hey guys, like I mentioned earlier, I am continuing to inspire myself only all the time. And now we have a new girl party located right here in Wilton Manors every Sunday. And the people behind uh, Holy Mackerel want you to know they're going to be there, rain or shine. So we got DJ Citizen Jane, a world-renowned global DJ, Woo -woo. opening us up at 5 o'clock, starting that tea dance. And then I'm going to come in at 9 o'clock and let her go home or at least join us enjoy a drink with all the ladies <laughs> and I'm going to take us into some melodic beats. Uh -oh. So come out this Sunday and come. And our boys are welcome too. So everybody, let's go. You know, I have to um, I have to add a support, now, of course, for uh, Chef Josie. But for Holy Mackerel, if, if you don't remember, last mm -hmm. summer, late summer, early fall, they fell under a brick wall in terms of the Trump stuff, of, of falling under the thing that happened to them in terms of Trumpsters wanting to use holy mackerel. They sit right on Walton Drive. They are an illustration of how you can persevere and survive. Congratulations to Holy Mackerel. You are a great reflection for the LGBTQ community to reach out to the girls and say, wait, we are going to commit to reach out to Daisy Dead Petals and do a Sunday brunch or a drag bingo. And bingo tonight, and, actually. And exactly. Absolutely awesome. We congratulate Holy Mackerel for not only turning the adversity that faced them by the Trumpsters, but turning it into lemonade. Congratulations to you, and we support you, if for no other reason, that you made that commitment. Lesbians! Lesbian Sunday! We'll be there! Me and oh, Tony will be there at 5 p.m. Whoop, whoop! Oh, sure. Now, wait. Don't go too far here. Uh, <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely great. And uh, congratulations, Joseph. Oh, and it's Wonderful. in the it's in the, it's in in the the speakeasy. In the speakeasy, the secret room, which the I went The secret room, really yeah. Cool. Secret room. And Jasmine Price Lords, uh, what's on your mind this week? Well, this week I'm feeling very shallow and vain, but <laughs> RuPaul, RuPaul's Drag Race is almost done. It feels like it's been a, a, a 10 year season and we're finally down <laughs> yes. to the top four. So just two more weeks and I'm excited for that. I've been, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan. Hopefully one day I'll be a contestant. But anyway, I digress, but I'm just waiting for it to finally be over and see who the new <laughs> winner will be. And your team who? Oh, I'm team Simone or Got Mick. Like you know, either I mean, one of them, I'm happy. <clears throat> I have but a whole lot Simone, of people that would kill me if I said this. But one of the grand dams from RuPaul's Drag Race is coming to Fort Lauderdale. Oh. We're getting ready. To oh, I know who. Actually, <laughs> great. Uh, and uh, make fun uh, of her uh, we're going to watch the uh, <laughs> final episode. All right. Well, next up, let's catch up. That's what's on our mind this week. Next, let's. Oh, wait. Oh. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You Mr. Jimenez. Wow. Exactly. It's me, uh, Victor Jimenez. It's right here on my teleprompter, too. I don't know why I overwrote it, because I overwrote it. Victor it because we're brown. Exactly. <laughs> what? Yeah, could be, could be. Well, you know, I'll tell you, Leah Delaria is on my mind because mm. I checked my email there a few times. I just confirmed, so my PR company doesn't even know that. She's going to be there opening night for our drive-in, oh. Outshine, Miami, oh, wow. That's um, April 23rd. She's in the film, and we just confirmed it. She's going to be flying in, and she's going to be there opening night for Outshine. Excellent. Congrats. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Very good. That's Badass. interesting news. By the way, Am I shallow when I kind of get a little tingle when uh, another gay guy at the table says, oh, my PR guy? 
Is, does that make me shallow? Yes. A lot of things make you shallow, but if we can start we'll to go with that. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> All right, we'll see where that goes. Oh, my God. All right, next, let's catch up with the news from Hollywood and the world of entertainment. We got a great one this week. We call it Celebrity Hot Topic of the Week. Channing Tatum is just perfection. Not too much, not too little. He's just magical. You know, magic. Well, I saw him once in his real stripper days in Tampa. Probably power two, I, I would assume. <laughs> Long before Channing Tatum was Channing. So our celebrity hot topic asked, hold your breath, Channing Tatum and HBO are producing Magic Mike, the competition series. <laughs> Move over, RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> what do y'all think about what's going to be coming to HBO? Coming. HBO. I think this is going to be a hit, guys. I don't know, because whether you're, you know, if you're a lesbian, you're gay, I mean, it's going to be great for our community because we just love competition. We love naked men. Even the girls <laughs> like naked men. Who True. are we kidding? Yep. And if they're like moving and shaking and we get to judge them, oh my God, this is like, this is the formula for gay success. Like, what could they possibly, like, what challenge, like, I just can't, I don't know. I'm just so like curious as to what is going to happen. I have to see that. Like, how much oil can you what put on like? your chest at once? It's all about, you know, it's like all about the G-string. What creative way can you get that? that? <laughs> yeah, it's all about the G-string. This yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Also, Channing is a little bit too thick. I mean, I like a little, little bit thinner person. Oh, did you call Channing too fat? Too thick. He is. Never there. Sir. Really? Have wow. you seen him in person? Are you looking at this picture? Yeah, I look at him. him. I, I like him a little, you know, thinner. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, he really? likes some anorexic. Right. Little, there's probably going to be like a lap dance me. challenge and uh -huh. a surfer boy type. And a, a, what, do you, what do you call that? A twerking challenge? You know, it's yeah. very funny to me uh, that we would say this because when I heard this news, I thought, wow, this is going to be so much fun to watch. You know, I've done a lot of RuPaul uh, for the years, and so I understand the formula, which is what this is going to be. I never even considered the composition, so that indicates <laughs> I am completely the consumer. That's going to be <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's like, who cares? Yeah. Like, kudos to HBO Max for giving us more stuff to watch. You know, when they came out with Legendary, I was like, yes, yes, and now this. It's yeah. like, all right, keep it coming, keep it coming. <laughs> We're like, what, what's the Venmo? Don't forget to, like, add the Venmo, the cash <laughs> app to the bottom. You know, at least these guys will make a dollar because, you know, I know in reality television, you don't make any money. But. We, uh, when we uh, did this story at uh, Queer News Tonight, I made the, um, I made the joke, oh, I'm, they're doing auditions right now. There's an, uh, you know, there's an audition. Don't process. say it. And I made the <laughs> note, oh, wait, I'm going to apply. He said it. <laughs> How can I be? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I go through, I think, but you can, can apply. apply. Wait, Power has something think, to say. I think the real question, I think the real question our viewers want to know is, uh, once this show comes out, is it's happening out going to be covering it as much as it covers the uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. You're, you're going to go out on your last schedule uh, <laughs> rotation of It's Happening Out still dishing RuPaul's Dry Grace. Is that I'm what you're doing? Out, I'm oh. going out with a bang. <laughs> I'm disappointed you didn't shade Al. That's yeah, what I thought exactly. you were going to do. Well, he's well, scared. <laughs> he I know that, that was a shade to Al. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. He put it Frame it's happening now, but Al as stripper is what I was hoping yeah. for. Tony, if you followed the show for the last three years, that was shame to <laughs> that was <laughs> It for sure was. Yes. All right, well, that's our discussion on what's going on in entertainment. Next, we report that Happening Out Television Network helps support our LGBTQ community. An example is Sunshine Cathedral. This is the world's largest queer church here in Fort Lauderdale, and we're broadcasting from our permanent set here in supporting that partnership. The network broadcasts the largest LGBTQ religious broadcast in the world, with more than 30,000 watching every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, and it's totally live. We encourage you to tune in. Our campaign of sponsorship proudly supports Sunshine Cathedral is my queer church. Watch this. <laughs>
Taisha Best, your queer community servant, and Sunshine Cathedral is my queer church. Well, we'd also like to thank our set designer, Concepto Modern Living, here in Fort Lauderdale for making this set in this amazing queer church campus possible. And finally, <laughs> we thank It's Happening Out Hotel sponsor, <laughs> Best Western I-95 Fort Lauderdale. This is the closest and best choice to the famous Wilton Drive, and our host and guest stay at this LGBTQ ally partner. We encourage you to stay here when visiting South Florida and come down for the Outshine Film Festival. Up next, if we were standing around an LGBTQ water cooler, this is what we would all be talking about this week. We refer to it as the hot topic of the week. A new study from the Williams Institute shows a large percentage of Americans believe LGBTQ discrimination in the workplace is real. Surveys have found LGBTQ people make up just between 6 and 7 percent of the workplace. However, a full 25 percent of all straight workers in America said LGBTQ people are treated worse than straight people. 45 percent of all employees have heard anti-LGBTQ comments in the workplace. 30% say they know LGBTQ workers are treated unfairly. The study also compared this to college-age students under the assumption that it would be better. Guess what they found? Nope, it's not. The study found 90% of college-age students report hearing anti-LGBTQ comments at school. 25% of those students think law enforcement officials uh, treat LGBTQ people worse than straight counterparts, while a full 17% believe healthcare workers actually discriminate. So our hot topic of the week is LGBTQ workplace. This huge new study reveals straight workers say they know LGBTQ workers are treated unfairly. What do y'all think? I think that's a good thing. It's heavy. Because then the, those employees will then talk to their HR departments. And will they? Forth. Will they though, Victor? No, but, but, will they? But, they won't. Okay? I was going to say, what percentage of those people would actually ring the bell? Like, you know, you'd be surprised. Like uh, in my background, I work for Turner Construction, largest general builder. And I was amazed two years ago, the last Miami Beach Pride, Turner, a contractor, had a float in the Miami Beach Pride. Oh, thing. awesome. Mm -hmm. And I was actually, oh my God, I haven't worked at this company in 10 years or 15 years. I'm actually very proud that I work for that company. So you'd be surprised that people say it in a survey, mm -hmm. it, it, it goes around. I think that's- In an anonymous survey. <laughs> Come on. It's always got to start no, somewhere. And, and, and I, hear, I hear what you're saying too, because you know, it's like, are, are the majority of our, our straight coworkers, are they going to be the guy who's like, you know, can see someone getting beat up and are the guy like videotaping the incident and not doing anything about it? We are in that culture that we're like, we're voyeurs mm -hmm. of like someone else's anguish someone pain. else's pain yep. and and i mean it's, it's it's great that you know 80 percent are seeing it and can recognize it but i like i'm kind of in the in the boat with you i'm like is anyone gonna ever do anything yeah. about it but i'm glad to hear that turner is putting a float yeah. oh, you know yeah. uh, you know my wife's a nurse practitioner and at one of her old jobs i won't mention where it was that when they would refer to her it would be like oh the lesbian nurse Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's normal. You think anybody would even squirm? You know, no. Tony, I'm curious. Uh, you have worked in LGBTQ political advocacy for a long, long time. Uh, lots of people say we don't need an Equality Act, but the Equality Act is aimed specifically at this issue of what this study shows. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I mean, we're very lucky here in South Florida that every county that's in South Florida has non-discrimination protections at the county level and sometimes at the city and municipal level. The problem is that small businesses, for example, get away with God knows how much discrimination against LGBTQ people and it's never enforced. It's almost more difficult to start up a lawsuit to be able to prove something like that, right? So to me, this survey is very interesting. I'm glad that people are aware that there's LGBTQ folks around them and hopefully, because you know what happens, right? Like you get to know someone and you're like, oh, this is my friend. Yes, they happen to be gay or lesbian or trans, but they're my friend and that people start to stick up for their LGBT brethren. Mm -hmm. That's what's important here, I think. I think Tony brings well, up a point about I, the small, oh, go ahead, Power. 
No, go ahead. Now, I was going to say, Tony brings up a good point about it being small companies. That's usually where the issues occur because they're not really enforced. It's always the bigger companies because they have a lot of money. They can right, be right, sued. Right. Small companies, they have no money and you know, they're just smaller deals. Your, your point is legit. Atrocious stuff happens, yeah. right? And I was involved in a lot of cases for a good 10 years where people would come to me in my previous capacity and ask us for letters of support or to come and testify on these kind of t statistics. But the reality of something coming to fruition in a courtroom was, you know, like one in a thousand, maybe. And, and Power, you were going to say? Well, I, well, I'm going to say that, you know, I don't know if people will, will stick up for or take action or act upon what they know. But I am encouraged that um, people at least are aware that LGBTQ uh, plus people are being treated, um, you know, worse than or more unfairly than non-LGBTQ um, people. Because um, first of all, that awareness is the first step. You know, in when it comes to civil rights and um, when it comes to um, race relations, there's a lot of people that aren't even aware that Black Lives Matter. And so we still have this discussion with a lot of ignorant people, um, you know, to even acknowledge the problem. And you cannot even begin to take steps to solve a problem if you can't even acknowledge it. So I'm glad and encouraged that at least people can um, acknowledge that there is a, a, an issue in the first place. And then Power point. makes a great point about just the basic ignorance of people. You, you know, we're in it, so therefore we think everybody knows as much as we do. And most people don't. don't. You know, they're just, you know, they're happy with their life. They, they don't even know. Oh, what do you mean you can't, you know, back then you can't get married, you can't adopt kids. You know, like they would be surprised. Not because they didn't, you know, they just were ignorant of the, that fact. And that, there's a lot of ignorance there. That has to I be. I think it's so funny. Like for me, um, I'm a, outside of all the fabulousness. <laughs> um, I'm a store manager for Starbucks and I've been there for almost 15 years now. Wow. Um, and I can't say that I've ever seen or been a part of had anything happen. I'm also a store manager, so my employees already know it's not, an, it's not a conversation, it's not an option. Um, I've, I've gone to work painted, so like, you know, my, my company's very, very involved with like all the community. I have had trans employees, I have a trans district manager right now, so like they're very, very open. And I'm not gonna say everything that they've done is perfect, don't get me wrong, um, but I do know like, you know, for me and my, my professional, History, I've not encountered. Let me, uh, let me change the, um, the subject just slightly. I had a conversation today. I did a post uh, about Sunshine Cathedral. This Saturday, they're doing a vaccination site. Uh, Sunshine became the first LGBTQ church in America to have a vaccination site. And I posted how incredible I thought that was. And, it w and I posted that in LGBT sites because I was encouraging groups, uh, LGBT, to come to Sunshine. And a, uh, a preponderance of comments was, why are you doing this? What's the big deal that Sunshine would do it? And my point to them was the reverse of this issue. We live in South Florida, so we have a great pass. If we were in DC or New York or West Hollywood or San Francisco, we have a great pass. But most communities are not South Florida, are not Wilton Drive or Fort Lauderdale. And my point to many of those LGBTQ people that were posting this is Sunshine gives a trans person, for example, the safety of coming to a place in vaccination that they can't get by going to the stadium or going to the CVS. They feel comfortable in doing that. And that was lost on many LGBTQ people. So I wonder, do we even discriminate among ourselves of going? I, I mean, yeah, I would absolutely. say yes, definitely. 100 percent. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you, you go. no, I was going to say, so Ariana Center partnered with Sunshine for Saturday to make sure yeah. that we got a bunch of trans people there. Yeah. And the reality is that the people that we're connecting with are people that some of them are homeless. Right? Some of them are living out of motels. These are the most marginalized folks within our community. They're not the folks that anyone that's active on Facebook necessarily is ever thinking about. Yeah. The privilege among our community and the, the, the tendency to not understand that there's more of us out there that really need our help yeah. is ridiculous, which is part of the reason why we're building the show Translation, yeah. to then, be able to talk about those topics. And, and piggybacking on that, like we have a, a film, AIDS Diva, the, the Legend of Connie Norman. She was a, mm -hmm. a, a trans female. I didn't know about her, but she, trans female, there was a scene in there, I'm so over the gays and lesbians because they just didn't understand where she was coming from and her point of view. And I can also understand it personally. I asked, I asked another executive director from an LGBT organization, 
how come it's so difficult for the film festival to get trans people to come to our audience? And he goes, they don't feel it's a safe space. And I'm like, well, I'm an LGBTQ plus film festival. But then I went to another LGBTQ plus film festival and I sat in a trans documentary. And then quite frankly, I heard two gay twink guys behind me and they made a comment about the, 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 les the, the trans on the, the screen that I'm like, now I get it. Uh, right. You know, like mm -hmm. you're, you're sitting in a the theater, you expect to be safe and now you're hearing these these comments from people that you shouldn't want to hear it if you want to just see this story. You know, it's interesting that you make that observation because first, it washes over me absolutely in the way that you said it. And second, and we've talked about this so many times at Queer News Tonight, uh, the T in LGBTQ is the wedge issue that the Tucker Carlson's and the Laura Ingram's are focusing on. And they're focusing on it because they know what they're doing. They're focusing on 22 in terms of trying to get the Senate back and maybe the House, and they're focusing on 24 of hoping to get the White House back, and they're using cultural fight of the T in LGBTQ. And when I hear you say it washes over me just, mm -hmm. it, it brings me to a stop, that if our own LG, B, and Q succumb to that kind of process, we are going to lose everything, because if we do not stand up in the next two years for the T, we have no hope of absolutely to agreed the i'd like to say one more thing agreed it's also not only about trans folks or gender nonconforming folks not feeling safe within a space it's about being given access to the space yeah. a lot of people can't afford a ticket yeah. to a film right. festival yeah. or to to much of anything right yeah. these are people that are sometimes working in survival sex work yeah. that are in, in in dire situations that don't have the money to to participate in these LGB things a lot of the time. Yeah. So it's our job to make these, these spaces accessible it's, as well. It's mm -hmm. so interesting right. to me. We're going to learn so much about the trans community in doing this show translation. There's so much we don't know that's finally going to be revealed because they have the opportunity to say it themselves, not Al's voice. Absolutely. And then actually backing up what you said, when we were fully virtual in August, our trans films did better virtually than they do physically. And I think it was for that cost of entry that you're talking about. And that's why moving forward, we always we are planning to always have a virtual component to the festival for those people where the yeah, cost of entry awesome. to the physical festival is that too is much. Mm -hmm. now that you is know. new there. thinking. And then, yeah. and then also just to make you aware of, you know, uh, our fund did an arts and cultural grant. Our grant application was to get funding for queer and trans people of color to provide more films for them, but also to, to have the capability to offer tickets for free to the community so that way we at least eliminate part of the cost of that's entry. That's amazing. Awesome. Victor, yeah. I don't want to put you on the spot. I've got to move on, but I don't want to put you on the spot, but, I, but I'm going to. Um, uh, the <laughs> film won't. that you're referring to, do you remember the dates and times or the name the, of the, the film? Oh, the AIDS Diva? Yeah. So AIDS Diva, The Legend of Connie Norman. It's virtually available April 24th through the 28th. And we have plenty of other trans films and the, the history film, but that, that was the one I specifically mentioned, April 24th through the 28th. AIDS Diva, The Legend of Connie Norman. And remind us. Uh, and she'll be one of the director, Dante, will be one of your guests. Uh, next excellent. Week. Oh, and oh, remind cool. us how we go Thanks. in to be able to watch that film. The, uh, go to outshinefilm.com and then uh, you'll see the, you know, go to the film thing. You'll, you'll see the movie there, click on it, and then you go through the process. And quite frankly, you'll be able to watch it on your computer or watch it on your smart TV. We made it, we changed our platform to make it that much easier for you to watch. I, I just it's very you, easy. And yes. From all of our experiences, I've been involved in LGBT film festival when they made celluloid uh, for films uh, at the turn of the ancient century, times, I think. Yes. In ancient Actually, times. Actually, in this case, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, this is super interesting to me because now we begin to justify the value of a festival like Alchine Film Festival, because we're inviting people in that have never felt like they had access before. Alchine doesn't need Al. They don't need Al. They need all of these people that feel like, wow, you're speaking to me. And that's that's what we've got to tell. Absolutely. That story is what we've got Amen. to tell over the next couple of weeks. I'm, I'm, I'm so thrilled that we've tumbled into that. Well, let's move out of our topic of the week. Uh, next, uh, there were lots of silly and important headlines in the news this week. So how about a lightning round? Let's discuss, are you tensing up, by the way? I am. <laughs> let's discuss them in our segment called Saved by the bell but there was a twist as Faye could she could be doing these words word for word we are only going to discuss each of these headlines and topics for just one minute at the end of that minute what are we going to do Faye bring that stupid bell You're that I hate ring that <laughs> lovely bell which I love it means all these hosts have got to stop 
and here we go. All right. You're like, We're come get it. No, 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 no. <laughs> then he'll like whack your chest. All right. Okay. All right. Here we go. Amazing news this week as we learn the new technology in Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine is now also being used in trials for an HIV vaccine. Saved by the Bell headline number one. HIV vaccine study is exciting because of COVID-19 vaccine technology, and it may be the key to preventing HIV AIDS. Let me jump in real quick. Let me jump in real quick. Uh, yes, it's exciting. Applause, applause. But see, this is what gets me mad. How many lives, countless lives over the many decades have been lost, and all of a sudden now we get the now we get the miracle of, a, of, of, of true hope because um, of COVID. You know, I think if the world took HIV as seriously as it took COVID, we could have saved a lot of lives a lot sooner. Wow, yeah. uh, great agree. point. Great point. What I do want to say is I interviewed one of the, of the scientists that's been working on, on these studies. The study is called Mosaico. And if you want more information, go to clinicaltrials.gov and you can find out everything. The really cool thing is that this trial started focused on trans women of color mostly, oh, okay. which is a great, great thing to know. And now they've been including other sectors of the community. And it, it sounds like within the next year or so, this vaccine will be available. Excellent. Is it called Mo Mo Psycho? Mo Psycho. Mo Psycho. Oh. This week, next. Mo Psycho. That's Mo Psycho. exactly Psycho. what we like did. Mosaic with That's a what I call my girlfriend. Mo Psycho. Did you hear this? Uh -huh. I hate that. Uh -huh. I'm sure you did. All right. Uh, let's move on. This week, R Russia became one of the worst places on the planet to be LGBTQ. Saved by the hell, uh, hell. Saved by the bell, yes. headline number two. Vlad the Impaler Putin, he bans gay in Russia. Marriage, adoption, images, everything. What do y'all think? Putin is gross. I hate him. I hope he goes into a hole with Trump and has explosive diarrhea and his penis gets smaller. <laughs> Wow. That's a lot of feeling. I just I, say this week <laughs> Russia became the... I, I know. <laughs> I, yeah, that's what I thought too. I was like, <laughs> isn't it like one of... Uh, it, if it's in, oh, not in the top two he's, places he's that are the, the worst places? He's constitutional amendments this week yep. con that were passed. 67% of the public banned gay God. in Russia. And you, he signed them. You know what's so interesting? I, as someone who's visited uh, Russia and has a lot of friends who are here in Wilton Manors who are gay and Russians barely speak any English. Uh, they say that, oh, we party in Russia, like as if. And we here are experiencing this news like it's the end of the world. But I think that in every place, like even in Cuba, right? We've been there too. Uh, it's not so popular, the idea of being gay, but it's still happening. Yeah. And um, I think that we're just a resilient community and no, regardless of what our geographical you know, placement is, we just do our thing. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I mean. All right. For <laughs> LGBTQ, there is a, a telltale Sorry. sign that the world is moving on. And it's happening after pandemic, which apparently is now. Saved by the Bell, headline number three. Summer LGBTQ season starts early. How do we know? Fire Island opens yes! early. Yay! Fire Island, Cherry yeah. Grove. What? What? It's the lesbians it's the that the are pines. freaking out, it's and there's no the lesbians I, I, here, right? <laughs> but it's also Fire Island, the Pines. What? The pines, what? yeah. I'll be with Cherry the boys. Grove all the way. Fire Island, the Meat Rack. All right. You know, oh, you know, it's funny. Last year, do you remember out? what we were doing at It's Happening Out? We were shaming Fire Island for all of the parties yeah. badly. Yeah. A year later, we're going, hey! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> what party is that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> as long as you have a vaccine. <laughs> yes, say, that's there's true. a caveat, right? <laughs> yeah, there is a caveat. Are you yeah. excited? Yeah. I guess. Yes. Uh, yes. Opening. We're going I'm, back I'm, to normal life again, uh, hopefully. It might still be okay. a little bit too soon. <laughs> yeah. Are, you think it's still too soon? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Right. Not enough people. We don't have that herd mentality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> soon. <laughs> Interesting. We're All not right. there yet. All right, let's move on. A new poll by Public Religion Research Institute, a nonprofit, nonpartisan group, found that people across major religious groups support 
LGBTQ non-discrimination protections of all religions. Nearly 75% of religious people said they supported such equality protections. This included 82% of white Protestants, 81% of Hispanic Catholics, 79% wow. of Jewish, 78% of Mormons, and the lowest support was, guess who, white evangelicals. But that still was 62% of them supported the Equality Act. Overall, only 19% of Americans oppose LGBTQ non-discrimination laws. With all of that said, Saved by the Bell, headline number four, fact is stranger than fiction. New poll shows religious backs LGBT Equality Act. Well, the, the, at the end of the day, I think that one of the very first things we were taught that, the, that God is love and the Bible is supposed to be about loving thy neighbor and protecting each other. And I think if you're talking about like being truly religious and following the book, you don't have to like accept and understand, but you should love each other regardless and protect each other. And I think a lot of people are reading the Bible for themselves now, and they're not listening and being told by these pastors and preachers yeah. who are twisting the word. And I think people are coming to their own understanding, and I think that's why we're seeing it. Jazz, I think they support us, but they don't want us in their churches. Well, it's, <laughs> okay? I've been to plenty of churches that aren't necessarily gay. Victor, gay by the way, is the first never... time that it's happening out, you'll have to back slap both of them. No, but I'm <laughs> yeah. saying to, to Jasmine's point, it's the people is one thing the the pastor is a right. different you know the, the the surveys of people and the pastor you know he's the, the pastor's the loudest voice and you know it's a lot of them is the emperor has no clothes you know like it's like, a, like a person can be great but then people sometimes are terrible right so when I, a person I takes the bible you know, when a person takes the bible and they're reading and they're finding their own understanding and they're finding their own journey with christ i think then we're going to see a lot more turn power that, you you get the last word jump right in i i don't believe it i don't believe the survey <laughs> You don't believe the survey. I don't. I don't believe the survey. Okay. All right. All right. Well, this week, uh, Fox News continued their culture war on the LGBTQ community. Have you heard about it? All you have to do is turn in at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, or 10 o'clock. It's three hours of a block of culture war hate. Uh, Saved by the Bell, headline number five. Tucker Carlson, stupidity alert. <laughs> when he says on the show last week, quote, trans people threaten the perpetuation of the species. Oh, God. What do y'all think? I don't even know what that wow. means. He really just like, what, no, I like, it just, <laughs> what an idiot. Uh, honestly, I, I, think that, I think that the stupidity alert, and I love it's happening out, but I have to say this, I think that the stupidity alert is on us for even talking about this stupidity alert. Um, <laughs> Agreed. Some, things are so, some things are so beneath us because they're so stupid that we shouldn't even give them the time of day. And Tucker Carlson is everything that that is. Amen. Um, okay. We, we're going to stop there? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we're all looking at him to hit the bar. Right, yeah. Let's move on. We're like, Have bye. you noticed right. how Ellen has increased her LGBTQ references in her show? We have, and we love it, by the way. Saved by the Bell headline number six. Ellen shocks her straight audience with a giant list of all the gay cartoon characters explaining it to her audience. What do y'all think? God. I'm surprised she didn't add Liberace to the list just now. <laughs> <laughs> SpongeBob was gay? Wow. Yeah, I how think cool. so. There's no Bert and Ernie there? What's up? And Jiminy Cricket, what? Like, no, how? Ursula? Ursula, I got. Def well, yeah, she's that's a lesbian. Divine. She's a drag queen. No, it's divine. She's a drag queen. <laughs> Ursula is divine. You know, Ellen so uh, yeah. in past years will do a reference to her wife and stuff like that, but she won't do a lot of gay stuff. Recently, remember the Tylenol gay? Gay Tylenol. Commercial? Yeah. Like, that was so funny. Like, yeah. she's doing a lot more funny things gay-oriented. Yeah. I'm loving it. I think, I think she just has to go back to her roots, and I think that's what we're seeing. Uh, do you? Is a return she to... She was beaten down by all of the staffers and all of the stuff. Yeah. And she just goes, wait, I'm just going to be me now. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. that's exactly right. That's her response to that specifically. Yeah. But I have a question, and Al is probably the only one that can answer this. Who is the pink cartoon guy? Snagglepuss. Yes. Yeah. I can answer that question. No, I can answer that question. Play along when I hit your... <laughs> Uh, Lay along when I hit your knee. <laughs> exactly. no. All right. Victor just said, shut up, Al. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's move on. The 100, Power, this is for you, by the way. The 100,000 prize is coming back for drag racing. Wait. Yes. Wait. Control room is talking to me. Uh, what? 
it, it's not RuPaul? Wait, who, who is it? Saved by the Bell headline number seven. Dragula season four is <laughs> premiering on Shudder with a hundred thousand dollar prize. Ever watch Dragula? Yes. No, but the Blade Runners are Dracula. everything. All right. So the last season winner is a uh, female drag king artist, and he is absolutely amazing. Land Insider. They have people across all gender types, body types. They embrace every single thing that it means to be drag in the gay community. Have you thought about trying out for Dragula? Hell no. They eat things that I'm not putting in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> if I can't oh, wash it first, wait, I'm not doing that's what they that. do? That's not what I read on Grinder, by the way. Oh, <laughs> They do all kinds of different crazy challenges and stuff. They stuff that they eat stuff, they get tattoos. Well, the tattoos I'm down for. But yeah. they have all kinds of crazy, like it's um, horror, glamour, and like it's just a crazy drag competition. And somebody tell me, what's Shudder? What is that? It's uh, an, like a TV like, app, like right? a streaming yeah. service. Yeah. It's, yeah. A streaming. it's a streaming service. Yeah. I love this show because it's so creative. Right. And they really push the limits. Like you were saying, the stuff you see on Dragula, you will never see on RuPaul's Drag Race. Never. And I'm their number one fan, wow. as everyone knows around the table. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is amazing. Did you beat me to that intentionally? Did you need to say I'm the number one fan? Because I am. I <laughs> you just wanted to cover you. Oh, God, power. You're Miss Power just <laughs> left. Okay. <laughs> power just left. Power. Yeah. All right. Power. All right. Power. Let's, let's go by the best. Finally, tonight, we're the LGBTQ community. Have you heard this, by the way? That we're the LGBTQ community? So what does that mean? Let's have some sex and relationships. <laughs> let's play another game. Our game, Ask. Who would you do? Yes. Why you do it, and what would you do to three interesting people? Tonight is our game, uh, Shag, Mary, Chop. You know, since it's Power's last organized night, he'll be back to It's Happening Out, but he's organized uh, recurring on It's Happening Out. Let's uh, oh. note that Power Infinity has been famously... <sighs> anti-RuPaul's drag race. He mentioned that tonight. Now, he has no idea the words that are coming out of my mouth at this moment. As he is the arch nemesis of the show, I, however, have been lovingly accommodating and respectful to him. <laughs> so, in honor of my friend in his last regular host gig at It's Happening Out, let's play with choices. Yeah? You guessed it, from RuPaul's oh. Drag Race. But let's play with a twist. So let's play the hottest RuPaul's Men's Race. After all, the hottest boys can also be queens. So this week, we are going to play with Daniel Donegan, a.k.a. Milk. And then Matthew James Lent, a.k.a. Pearl. And last, and certainly not least, J. Day, uh, uh, help me there because I can't Noriega. see yeah. Noriega. 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 <laughs> Adore Delano. Yes, Adore Delano. Um, so, let's play Shag, Mary Chop, and I'm going to save power uh, for last. Tony, uh, who would you shag? I would probably shag Pearl because he's adorable, and there's like a grit about Pearl that I really appreciate. Me too. I would... Probably marry Milk because he's gorgeous and seems like he's a nice person. I feel like from watching the show and the seasons. I oh, really? Do you watch RuPaul's Strike Race? I That's do. <laughs> I do. Sometimes twice. Um, I love Adore Delano. I do as a character, but I also find her incredibly annoying oh. and difficult to work with. I used to be a judge on Ultimate Miami Drag Queen since its inception until last year that the pandemic started right. and worked with her in some capacity, and by the end of the night, I couldn't stand her. Right. Like, even the album that I had bought, her debut album, you know, I threw away. That is so interesting, Tony, mm -hmm. because now you have a little taste of what I experience every How did Wednesday you do night it? When, you're, when you're here. You're a saint. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you. And Victor, uh, who are you going to shag? I shag uh, Danny Noriega. Yeah. Do you like the boys, huh? Oh, I'm just saying, I, 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 I'm going by looks here. So I shag him, I'd marry Pearl, and I'd, uh, I guess, uh, kill Milk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Really? <laughs> you know, Milk is, uh, in all of the, the viewer polls, has always been viewed as 
the most attractive man that has ever Gorgeous. appeared on RuPaul's Drag Race. Mm -hmm. All right. And Faye, let's right. move to the girls. Yes. Uh, none of these boys care anything of what you're getting ready to say. Yes, I'm very well aware of that. <laughs> Got it. So I'm going to shag uh, Matthew James Lent because he just looks shaggable. Yeah, right? And then I'm going to marry Daniel Donegan because he's, like, I saw some of his other pictures and he's got, like, hairy chest on one of the other pictures. So he's very versatile in his look. So you can, you know, marry that and do your own stuff in the bedroom there. And I am going to chop Danny Nor Noriega. I, I don't know. I don't like that little Superman curl thing going on. It scares me. <laughs> he kind of looks sister. like a serial killer kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, I'm the only crazy bitch in the relationship. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, we believe that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all went. You know oh, your yeah, wife. That's, that's, that's true. And, and Chef Josie, who would you shag? Um, I am going to shag the cutie, uh, Daniel Donegan, Milk. I mean, he is cute, like he for the same cute. reasons. Yeah. It's like versatile. Okay, well, I could get down with that. You probably and could top him too. <laughs> hey, whatever. Like I said, versatility <laughs> is our friend. Uh, and. Um, and then I'm going to marry uh, Matthew because, you know, he has tattoos. He's a little, like, cool like me. So I think we'd probably have fun, you know. Okay. And he could probably help me with my makeup. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> um, but the other one, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Not my type. I don't know. All right. And Jasmine, who are you, Shaq? I mean. Uh, drag queen to drag queen. It'd be chops across the board. However, that's not how this game works. Very exactly. good. So, I mean, I've worked with the door. Can't stand her. I'm sorry, boo. I just, oh my God, I can't. She, <laughs> she's a chop. Um, so, I would have to marry Milk because Pearl is too light and if I smack him I leave a handprint like no I can't, like <laughs> he's too pale for me so I'd have to go all y'all all y'all haters on white people listen I, I, I like I a little girl <laughs> <laughs> right I was going to say, you have a white husband. All right. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> All right. And so, um, uh, in final celebration of RuPaul's Dry Grace, I can't wait to hear what's going to come out of his mouth. Power Infinity, who are you? Oh, <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> That was good. That was good. All right. All right. Your joke is better than my joke. Oh my God. Right. Very good. Uh, power. Uh, one last time to get those party shots in on RuPaul's Drag Race. Uh, who are you going to yes, show? Yes, it's for the last motherfucking time. Oh my God. And who's the shag? This part I'm not going to miss. RuPaul. Oh. Um, I'm going to shag Matthew James Lent. Um, I think, oh, yeah. I think I've actually worked with all three of them, but I'm going to shag Matthew Pearl. Um, I'm going to marry Daniel Donegan, AKA Milk. And unfortunately I'm going to have to chop a door. Sorry, a door. Excellent. Okay. Well, one uh, parting shot from power. Um, before we end the show, we want to introduce our sponsor, Jets Pizza. Faye, why don't you actually help me with this? You, you be Carol Merrill. Nobody knows who I'm talking about. Vanna White. Uh, Vanna, Vanna White. White. Vanna Brown. Vanna Brown. Uh, exactly. <laughs> um, if you're coming to South Florida, you got to try this pizza. Uh, it's great. Uh, the LGBTQ community likes it. Uh, it's Jets Pizza, and we're getting ready to enjoy it here at the studio. Well, that's it, America. Another week for you and the world's first and most popular our LGBTQ talk show in the world. Before we <laughs> sign off, let's hear from our host for one final good night. And let's begin with Tony Lima. Good night, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Continue to watch It's Happening Out Network, not only for this show on Wednesdays, but for Queer News Tonight every night of the week, except Mondays and Wednesdays. What? Only watch on Tuesday <laughs> so you can see me. Uh -huh. With that said, get vaccinated. Very important to get vaccinated. As I was saying before, Sunshine Cathedral has a vaccination day. They are slots available, so go onto their website and check that out and continue to take care of yourselves and each other. Yeah, and uh, let's have a good night from Chef Josie. All right, guys, well, listen, I'm going to just let you know, there are going to be things in this life that really piss you off, okay? But you need to do your best to stay in control of your own emotions. This is a public service announcement for everyone out there living in this crazy time called now. Uh, and don't forget, come visit me this Sunday at Cubs at the Holy Mackerel um, 
Holy Mackerel Brewery here in Wilton Manors. It's our girl party and the boys are welcome and we're going to be having a lot of fun. And I'll see you next week here, you know, on It's Happening Out with all my friends. And until then, uh, you can also find me at Bubbles and Pearls. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. that, we love Bubbles and Pearls. In fact, many of us are having dinner there tonight after... Uh, we're there so like three times a week. Some food, <laughs> apparently. All right. And a good night from Jasmine Price Lords. And by the way, Jasmine was uh, uh, an anchor tonight at Queer News Tonight. Uh, I believe the first ever since we've done Queer News of a bearded queen. So congratulations. She was wonderful. And you did Gorgeous. a great job. She rocked. I learned how to read just for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, good night, everybody. Thank you for watching and supporting and giving our community a voice and a platform. Um, and, you know, continue to spread love and light in the world and be the change you want to see. Thank you. And uh, next up, uh, I constantly, and I've said this for an entire year, no one has been hit harder in pandemic than our 501c3 charities. And a perfect example of that is the Outshine Film Festival. We have stood with them last summer. Uh, we uh, stand with them uh, this spring. Uh, they do a great job and they need your support. In the long history of the Miami Fort Lauderdale uh, Gay Film Festival, which is now the Outshine Film Festival, there has never been greater need than in the spring of April of 2021. And to uh, watch over the next two and a half weeks and support them is vitally important. And a good night from Victor Jimenez. Well, first, I want to say uh, thank you, Al, for having me on the show tonight. Uh, first time here, and I had a great time to everybody. And uh, definitely thank you to It's Happening Out. And like Al said, you know, come support us, uh, outshinefilm.com. Get your tickets now, April 23rd through May 2nd. Join us for our opening night drive-in, our closing night at the Miami Beach Botanical Garden, and all the great films we have in between. Thank you. Absolutely. And finally, a final in regular cast from episode one and the tryouts of It's Happening Out almost three years ago. A good night from Power Infinity. Well, good night, everybody. Um, this is bittersweet, to say the least. Um, you know, three years ago, almost three years ago, in September of 2018, we started a new concept, a new show, a new idea, and look where we're at now. I've, I have grown with this family, and um, just, you know, to everybody out there, if I've pissed you off over the last three years, if I've somehow managed to offend or hurt your feelings, I, well, that's just your hurt feelings. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I'm very, very glad and humbled that you let me into your, your home and that you've allowed me to be a part of the conversation. I'm very thankful to it's happening out and I encourage everybody to continue to watch, continue to engage, and to continue to support um, this program and other LGBTQ organizations, platforms, and programs all around the world, because um, you know we've come very far, but we still have miles to go before we sleep. Good night. Yeah. And uh, Steve, uh, perhaps we could do a three shot with the, uh, the thank you note and power in myself, because I want to also do a special uh, good night message. And I want to make a comment about Power Infinity. And if not, just Power and the image that you just had would be fine. But I do want to make a comment about Power Infinity. This is finally my opportunity. Finally, my opportunity to get back at Power Infin uh, Infinity. He has been actually so interesting to me. He was an icon on South Beach at a time when icon was not a word used lightly. It led to world-class drugs, sex, and everything that made Miami in the 80s and 90s so infamous and fabulous. He leaves South Florida then for Central Florida and has a chance of a change that he wants to make in his life. Quieter as a DJ, charity work, advocacy in the LGBTQ community. That became his life in Central Florida and as a dedicated relationship participant. For the last decade, he has become one of the brightest liberal voices I frankly have ever seen in our community. And that is saying something. He was the bane of gays for Trump. Log cabin Republicans walk away and so many of the great unwashed and the ignorant. 
That includes those that dared troll him in social media, <laughs> or more likely, who he would bait out and then destroy in their contradictions. Top of that list in the last four years was Donald J. Trump. This advocacy ran him aground frequently with Facebook. He, in fact, went to Facebook jail more than anyone I have ever known in my life. Don't tell him, but I'm very proud of that. My confidence in these facts ultimately and foolishly baited me into a bet with him that I still have to fucking pay. And I sure will. do. And I will. Sure do. So when It's Happening Out started on that first tryout so many years ago, I think we both knew we were the ones. We were the ones that were going to survive. The rest is history. The significance of moments with power on this show are beyond the time we have to summarize it. Let's just say we, like on the TV show Pose, are watching an iconic personality. In the last year, he comes full circle, wanting to work in a new industry that will help others. His service-related job doesn't happen because of a decades-old issue revealed in a background check. He could have surrendered, but in typical power style, he fights for eight long months until last week and the recent announcement of a decision reversal and final approval for that job that now starts. In the last year, he has moved full circle from his early days in the LGBTQ entertainment and comes to faith, religion, and what he thinks of where he is going now occupies his daily thought. He is an amazing person, one that I am proud to call my friend. He leads the iconic House of Infinity. You know what that means. He is a success. He has always been a success. Because of who he is, he will always be a success. The character Pray Tell from another legendary house said on that TV show, quote, They'll never know that feeling. What's it like to love without worrying that you are going to die? Or worse yet, that you're going to kill somebody? I don't know what's shittier. Having that freedom taken away or never having had it to begin with, end quote. So I wish power infinity that freedom forever. That is, it's happening out. Is what you watched important to you? You sat right here at the LGBT kitchen table, right along with all of us. We are here every Wednesday at 8 p.m. And remember... If it's important to you, it's happening out. Good night.